Okay, we have to talk about why GOT7's JB had to apologize for his, as people were calling it, his Gucci wall. I feel like Gucci. Yeah, at first, I didn't know what people meant by Gucci wall either. I mean, when's the last time you heard those two words used together? But here's what happened. First of all, it's now official, even though they tried to deny the rumors, JB has officially signed with Higher Music and Jay Park. They went live together, it was awesome, Jay Park teasing an eventual collaboration. Not just with JB, but GOT7 as a whole. Yes, please. GOT8, forever. <laughs> Then a few days ago, JB did another live stream, this time by himself, talking about his upcoming solo song, what he's been up to. At one point, he moved the camera to change the angle, and that's when people noticed the wall behind him. This particular wall that people are now calling the Gucci wall seemed to have some, I don't know, nudish female photos of varying degrees on it. As you can imagine, there were huge reactions of varying degrees as well. A lot of people had no problem with it because it just seemed like very various pieces of art that he's collected. Some people just thought it was strange or weird, while others were upset that he wasn't more careful, especially when there could have been minors watching. The conversation then spun out to imagine if this were a female idol with nude photos or art of males. People were saying that she would be completely shamed for it. Well, JB's new agency, Higher Music, then released an official statement apologizing for the naked photos that appeared during his live stream. They explained that yes, on top of music, JB JB also expresses interest in art and photography and that the photos were the works of fashion photographers. Regardless, they apologize for not being cautious about the fact that people of various ages could have been tuning in. After this, JB put out his own apology on social media saying those were photos from an artist that he likes, but he's sincerely sorry because viewers of all ages could have been watching. It's been a day or two, I think the situation is pretty much put to bed now. Let me know what you guys think. Would this be a different situation if the genders were flipped? I think definitely there should be an air of caution because he does have a lot of young fans. But I also think we should prepare ourselves to see a different side of JB now. His new solo song is literally called Switch It Up. And if you've heard the lyrics, certainly a lot more on the mature content side of things. But JB is not the only solo we're getting this month. Joy was also announced to be making her solo debut. I love the green logo tying in with Wendy, Irene, and Sogi. And even though it's a remake album, I still can't wait to see her perform. I do wonder though, if she's going to perform more OST type songs, will SM make her lip sync for the first week? A lot of you guys may have heard this before, but for those who haven't, it's pretty known, especially like 10 years ago, if you were a fellow K-pop fan back then, that a lot of times SM has their artists lip sync the first week of promotions to focus more on the performance. Now, I don't know if they still do this. I just enjoy the performances these days. I don't try to hone in on that stuff. but. This week, that became a huge topic when NCT Dream performed Dive Into You on Music Bank. If you notice here, Lunjin is performing without a mic. And I'm gonna be honest here, I did speed through his name because I don't think I've ever said it in front of somebody. And uh, I'm not confident I'm saying it right. <laughs> Anyway, anyway, luckily Mark was there to save the day and passed on his mic, but because his voice was already heard even though he didn't have a mic, people started making a big deal about the lip sync thing. Personally, I don't really care about the lip sync thing. It's not like groups never do it or do it all the time. It's not like we've never heard him sing live before. We all know he can sing. Actually, here's him singing one of my favorite BOA songs. <laughs> Even better, here's him straight live right before that performance. As you can see, he has nothing to prove. It's just a really interesting situation. A lot of people wondering how he got out there without a mic. Did he forget? Even if he did forget, isn't there someone that's supposed to give them the mics? Or at the very least, check them before they go out there because people are doing their hair, stylists are checking their outfits. It gets crazy. But it's it's whatever, things happen. Astro's Chanwu once forgot his 
his mic as well and openly talked about it on Knowing Brothers. Again, it's not like he can't sing. Go back to his school days and audition clips if you want. By the way, fun fact, did you know YG updated their audition age limit? Yeah, if you were born between 1920 to 2020, you can apply. A lot of companies are pretty strict with their audition age limits, but apparently, if you turned 100 last year, you're good to go. If you were born last year, you're good to go. I was born yesterday. Actually, if you were just born, I'm gonna need you to get off of this video. There's way too much Gucci talk. I feel like Gucci. Now, obviously, auditioning doesn't mean you're going to debut, but it's funny they did this. I've always seen YG Entertainment being more open to age as long as you were exceptionally talented. Back in 2009, I thought it was incredible that in one group, you had Minzy and CL in their teens and Bomb and Dara approaching their late 20s. Which we have to mention, after 17 years, Dara has finally parted ways with YG Entertainment. Pretty much the same time 21 celebrated their 12th anniversary. Has it been that long? However, I don't think that was the most shocking departure this week. Because out of nowhere, it was dropped on us that all six members of GFriend have decided not to renew their contracts with Source Music. What? What? According to Source Music, after a deep and serious debate with the members, they have agreed to not renew and depart from the company. This is shocking for many reasons. One, Source Music was just acquired by Hype, and a lot of people looked at that as sort of a new beginning, possibly more resources and things like that. Two, their debut was January of 2015, meaning it's only been six years, not seven. However, it seems like they may, because I'm not really sure, have actually signed contracts in 2014 and their debut was either delayed or pushed to 2015. But again, I'm not sure about that. Three, they had activities, schedules, and digital content coming up. Ones that are now being deleted off official fan cafes. That along with the reports that Source Music is trying to file a trademark on the name GFriend, which I thought they would already have, kinda tells us that this was somewhat abrupt. Not just for us, but for Source Music. Like they were expecting the girls to resign, but are now scrambling to tie things up. I don't know, there are a lot of theories as to why the girls may have decided not to renew. Was it problems with the company? Was it just that they wanted to move on. I mean, they did thank Source Music in their handwritten letters. However, some people think they've been way overworked. Maybe it was actually the company wanting to focus on a new girl group. We just don't really know right now. We also don't know what the state of their future together is. In those letters to fans, it seems like they're all saying G Friend is over. Maybe not that they are separating or disbanding as a group, but them being known as G Friend. This G Friend chapter is over. Man. I don't know. It's a shame because G Friend seems stronger than ever after their last release, Mago. I can't begin to tell you guys how much I absolutely love that song. Yes, they could regroup under a new identity like Highlight have Beyond successfully done, but they could also very well now be going their separate ways and pursuing their individual activities. It's a little too early to tell at this point. Besides the handwritten letters, the girls haven't revealed too much. Although, remember, technically they are still under contract. But on May 22nd, when their contracts officially end. If this is the last time we see them together as G Friend, as a group, I think we all want to say thank you. Thank you for all the amazing music, the amazing moments. These six girls became giants in the industry despite all the odds stacked against them. Thank you, G Friend.